Welcome back to episode 2 of my study abroad survival guide. Uh, today I am going to talk about documents that you will need that are crucial for our study abroad programme, especially in Europe as well. So there are many, many documents that you will need. There will be many filling out of forms and every country is going to be different. This is from my experience in Denmark. I have things that probably aren't um, needed for other countries. Um, so I had to get like a CPR number, which isn't needed in other countries. So. For most of these documents are going to be generalised throughout Europe, but there are some specific ones in regards to just Denmark in general. So yeah, as I said, there are a lot of documents to go for, uh, to go through. So definitely if documents and emailing everyone all the time is not your idea of fun, um, just be worried that a study abroad requires all of that. Like, who knew that going to live in a different country would require so much paper? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've got eight documents that I think are important for everyone to have um, and that I needed to fill out and I think it's just something mindful that you might need. Number one is the most important document that you will need to go anywhere abroad, anywhere. And that is a passport. Yes, this is an up passport cover. But yes, a passport is vital if you want to study abroad. If you want to go abroad anywhere, you need one of these. Um, cover, you don't necessarily need. <laughs> yes, so you definitely need to have a passport to go abroad. You're not gonna get on the plane if you don't have your passport. Um, definitely make sure that it is valid. Um, mine, I think I got my passport renewed in 2017, so it was valid right up until 27, 2027. So just make sure that your passport is valid for your whole duration, including six months after your study abroad, because you, the thing that you don't want this to happen is to be abroad and then suddenly your passport's expired, and some airlines won't even let you fly if your passport is due to expire. So definitely make sure it's all up to date and yeah, it's all ready for it. My number two, which I think is also really important, and this document is free, so just definitely get it. Even if you're not doing a study abroad, I think it's such a useful document to have when you go abroad to Europe. And this is only for Europe, it's only covered in EU countries. So, I mean, until Brexit happens, it is important. <laughs> and that is one of these, and it is an e -hick. Uh, yes, it is very important to have an e card. It is your like health insurance basically. Um, yeah, it's a European health insurance card. So if you do get sick anywhere, just go into the hospital, just show them your card and you can basically get what you'd get in the UK really. I have a really unhealthy relationship when it came to e cards to do my study abroad. So I had an e card all set and ready even before I started my study abroad that was going to be in date, perfectly fine. Then I was told two weeks before coming out here that I need to get a different e card. So I phoned the lady up and she sent me out another e card, which is exactly the same as the one before. But then I told my university this and they were like, no, you need a special study abroad e hit card. So I phoned up the lady again and she's like, you're not going to get it in time. So you have to leave without and I was very stressed about this because I needed an e hit card to get my CPR number in Denmark. So yeah, I phoned the lady, I was very stressed. I was praying that it was going to come the day before I left. It didn't. My mum had to post it out to me, which was very stressful. But in the end, any any e hit card would have done. It's no like the card I got is no different to the card that I had already. Exactly the same. So I really have no idea what my university were doing back home in the UK. I was very angry with them, very stressed. So yeah, just if especially if you're coming abroad to Denmark, 
for a CPR, any e-hit card would work because e-hit cards in Denmark are completely invalid anyway because you've got that CPR card and that is your health insurance on that. Um, if you are going to another European country, just make sure ahead of time that you've got a special study abroad one and yeah, just get that one over just a normal one. At least then no one can really have a go at you, but I just thought they're both the same, it's irrelevant. So if you do get just a normal Heathcote card, it's not the end of the world. It's just your university being very annoying like mine was. So my number three is, this is something relevant for my CPR. Uh, you may need this. If you have another document that you need to apply when you go into that country, you may not need it. But I also think it's quite a good handy thing to have as well. And that is a set of passport photos. I look horrendous in these, so these aren't going up for any longer. <laughs> Um, yes, so passport photos for me in Denmark were important because I needed to have two passport photos to give to the lady to get my CPR card. Yeah, it was just I had them done before I left the UK because over in Denmark they're like, like you can do them in a home country, it's not the end of the world if you forget um, the passport photos, you can do them abroad, but it was just a little bit easier just to have them from the, the UK. So you yeah, just have them. I think it's always good to have a few extra passport photos as well. So, it's only a fiver as well, so if you've got them, great, you don't need to go out and buy some, but if you're going abroad and you haven't got any passport photos, maybe just get a set done, just in case it's the worst will happen. My next document that I think is important to have are letters of enrolment. So, yeah, I can show you this one. <laughs> so, this is just a letter from my university and it's just, um, confirming that I'm doing to study abroad. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, everyone kind of needs to have their letter confirming that they're going abroad and also their letter from the university confirming, um, from their study abroad university confirming that they're doing a study abroad. So yeah, definitely get your letters. Um, don't forget it to the last minute like I did. Again, my university was so annoyingly frustrating that they only told me to get documents and only remind me to get documents right at the last minute. They could have just sent out a general email just saying, make sure you've got this, this, this and that. But no, they just tell you, oh, remember you need this thing, remember you need that thing at really awkward times. I think if they just sent out a checklist, it would have just been so much easier for all of us to just, just go through and do it. But yes, make sure you've got this letter. It's important as well if um, some country, like I know especially for like, um, like America and that, you need to make sure you have your letter just so some countries be a bit iffy about you coming in, you might also need it for a visa. Um, for Europe, yeah, it's just something to have. I think for me personally, I needed to show my letter to this university here in Aarhus. Uh, yeah, just to let them know that my university has agreed for me to do this study abroad. So yeah, that's an important thing to have as well. And then also from your university, you'll have a letter of enrolment and that is something to just confirm that you're fully settled here. It's just something for the authorities as well. It's good to have hold of just in case you need that again. So the next thing has been the bane of my existence for studying abroad. I think everyone hates them. I hate them especially. So if you want to do an Erasmus degree abroad, you need to have something called a learning agreement. So you need to have make sure that all your modules that you're taking are on this agreement signed by both your academic coordinator back home and your study abroad coordinator in the home in the uh, country you're studying abroad in and if anything changes so for me um none of my courses were set in stone until i started like a week before they were susceptible to change and i might have had clashes so if you do change it then you have to kind of go through all that process again you also need to make sure you've got certain um, ECT credits and everything as well. The document looks something like this. There's a few sheets to it as well. But um, basically, yeah, here is where you put any changes down. And it is very annoying putting down changes, swapping and changing them, then emailing someone to make sure it's signed, visiting someone to make sure it's signed, and sending it back to the UK. It is important to get it done. It is so stressful. <laughs> um, it, that is important as well because it will determine whether you pass the year or not. 
and it will also help you with your Erasmus grant, which I am going to talk about next. So the Erasmus grant is something for students that are studying in an Erasmus program. Depending on which country you go to, if you go to a country with a higher um, standard of living, like wages are higher and costs of living are higher, or a lower cost of living city, it depends on how much you get. Um, so yeah, it's something like this. There is a lot of writing, there's a few documents in there as well. Um, you have to make sure you provide the right bank details for the money to go in and you need to make sure that you kind of set everything up, you have to read through all this paperwork just to make sure it's all correct. Yeah, and then you provide your bank details. But yeah, if you're studying in countries such as Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Ireland, Luxembourg, Norway or Sweden, then you get 350 euro per month, which is really great. And if you study in any other European country, you get 300 euro a month. Um, special needs and if you come from a disadvantaged background, you get a little bit more, or a little and if not, we just get that. The way how it's paid is very annoying. <laughs> so you get the 70% 70, 70 of the overall grant at the beginning of the year. So that's quite a substantial sum and that's great. Yeah, 70% of 300 euros times 12, that's great. And then you only get the rest of the 30% after you finished your degree abroad which I don't really see how that makes sense you want this money to study abroad you want it to do things abroad but you kind of get 30% after your study abroad which is annoying but I think it's also kind of nice because at least then you've got some money like you know you're not going to be poor when you've come off your year abroad but yes it's very important to get all these documents done um, so you can get some free money and then you don't have to pay back <laughs> And then going off that, my last two documents go hand in hand with each other and that is this arrival certificate and also um, the departure certificate. I haven't left yet so I haven't got the departure certificate and it's just the blank one that I printed off. Um, but yes, the arrival certificate you have to get signed, stamped within the first two weeks that you're abroad. It's something very important to remember, I did not remember. It was until December that I, my university kindly reminded me, oh yeah, we haven't got this yet. And I was like, oh crap, because study, like moving to a different country is so intense and so much is happening. You're getting used to a new space, you're meeting new people. And it's when no one really just sends you a little reminder to say, make sure everyone's got their arrival certificates handed in on time. You're gonna forget, especially in the first two weeks you're going to forget. I forgot and I'm usually quite on top of things but the arrival certificate is very important because once you send that off within maybe a month then you get that first 70% of your Erasmus grant which is great. I on the other hand had to wait until December because I was stupid enough and forgot so you do get if you do forget it's not the end of the world but just make sure you get it all signed off and done in the first two weeks because going to the office to get it signed two months after you've arrived. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> and then again, the departure certificate, which I haven't got yet. Um, you have to go back to like the international centre or wherever you went when you arrived, get it all signed and stamped, and then just send it back to your home university. And I reckon within a month, you get your last 30% of your Erasmus grant. And it's just to let the university know that you've arrived and you're right, and when the end of your degrees happened abroad. So, they are quite important documents. It's just very stressful having all this pushed in you. So if you're kind of on top of it all, got them all printed off and all set out, I think you'll be okay. A tip for what I have with documents is I put them all in a hand wallet. So I don't know if you remember, but I did a study abroad call at the beginning of my year and this was one of them and it has come in so much handy. All my documents and all these documents are in here, so like birth certificate and other bits and pieces are in here and all of those documents I just showed you go in there as well, so at least then it's all in the one place and you're not hunching around everywhere for where this one piece of paper was that you was given on the first day. If you just put it straight in here, it's all there. And that should hopefully make document signing a little bit less stressful. <laughs> so yes, I hope this video helped. 
Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned next week for when I talk about culture shock when you come to a new country. So yes, I shall see you next week and thanks for watching. Bye.